don't knock the hand that feeds you because, and I don't think, I don't think she's out of a great hand. She's nowhere close to, uh, to Rhea Ripley or Charlotte Flair. See how many how many movies you, have you have you seen that just have the same format? Good guy, bad guy, then the bad guy, the good guy wins at the end. But if they throw some swerves in there, I mean the the good guy can go over, but yet he he suffered to get there. So they got a lot of stories going now. I mean we could sit here and talk till the sun comes up about all the different avenues they have to go down now. And this didn't just happen overnight. This happened over the last eight months since Triple H took over creative. And I think the first thing Triple H had to do with creative is, is change their morale, change their mindset. Because I think Vince had them thinking a, a certain way and everything they did wasn't good enough. But Triple H, that's not his personality. I mean... I've heard a long time ago, the worst idea ever presented is the one that's not presented. So unless you present it, and the way creative works is, say we're, we're in creative, right? And I say, what about if this happened? And then you go, hmm, that's a good idea. Well, what if this happened right before that? Okay. Somebody else says, okay, and then this then when you throw all that together, they present it to Triple H, and he makes the call. But you've had a, a, a you group sourced. That's what creative is. It's a group source, which I, I kind of don't like sometimes, because I've been on some creative teams. You would I'm, a table, say of eight guys. Yeah, I could see a, a, an idea start here and go around the table and just go down and everybody takes it and either adds or subtracts. By the time it came around the table to the first guy, I've seen it sometimes where actually the participants have changed. <laughs> so you can't have too much input, but I think you just have your top guys putting the input in and then Triple H ma making the final decision. I think that's the way it works and it works the best. But the but the Ray Mysterio the Mysterio uh, story, that's that's the type that doesn't burn out quick, and they can keep it going. I'll say it again: story never ends. One thing that Triple H has been getting criticized with as far as his booking in the last couple of months, and especially during the lead up to WrestleMania, was the women's title feuds going into WrestleMania. On night two, you had Bianca Belair defeating Asuka in what turned out to be a very great match. No, another match that had some superstar entrances yeah. with the multiple Oscars, and then Bianca coming out with the Divas of Compton, including a young Katorchinist who was the star of that whole kind of set piece that they did. Her mother unfortunately passed away, showing so much strength during that entrance there, seeming so happy to be in that moment with Bianca. And then Bianca and Asuka pulling out a great matchup on the WrestleMania stage, mm -hmm. overcoming what was a lackluster build. But the other match that we're going to really talk about here is from night one, which I know you told me before we, went, we started recording this was your match of the weekend with the two WrestleMania cards, Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley, which they 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 nearly stole the show. They they really put went out there and had one of the best women's matches in WrestleMania history with Rhea Ripley winning against Charlotte Flair with an avalanche riptide for the win. What did you think about this matchup and why was it your opinion the best match of WrestleMania weekend? Well, first of all, I didn't have high expectations for it because I'm not a really a Charlotte Flair fan, so to speak. And I am more of a Rhea Ripley fan. But then as the match started, now I saw the, the, the maturity of Charlotte Flair. She took her time. 
and they didn't get in a hurry. And they, after a while, you go, wait, wait a minute. Now, I'm watching it as a fan now. I don't know the finish. I don't want to know the finish. I want to sit there like a fan and enjoy the match. And I do think that's the best woman's match I've ever seen because of, of the way they did it. And this had to be Charlotte Flair. She was, she was, she paced it, and Rhea followed her. I mean, it was you'd you'd have to see it. The one move that stands out, and I'm sure you move it, you remember, is the back, the belly to back suplex. The German suplex. She turned, landed on her face. Yes. No, she landed on her head. But I think because both these girls are tall. And I think Charlotte pushed, and when she was taking her, when Rio was taking her, and they over rotated, I think, and she landed on, and she cut her nose. Yeah. So, but I've never, I've never seen that in a girls' match. I haven't seen it many times in a guys' match, in a men's match, but. And it was the right time to switch that title. Because, Charlotte, how long has she been there? 14 years or so? Uh, she's been there. I know she's, I think she started in the Performance Center 2012. So just over 10 years. 10 years. Well, she's been there a long time. Yeah. But in 10 years, WWE can wear you out. I mean, if you're there, now she has an opponent that can go for a while while they build these other girls. Now, you, you're, you're talking about uh, they haven't really spent a lot of time with the girls. And Ronda Rousey came out, I think, last week and yeah. blasted octogenarians that still think they're hip and cute. I would remind little Miss Goldilocks there she better temper that tongue just a little bit because it's a good thing that uh, that they came along after her UFC career was over since she beat those, remember she beat those two challengers like she got them on the mat they tapped out Did she met that Holly, Hollis girl or whatever her name was. Holly Holmes. Oh, and just, she just straightened one out on her and she knocked her out and, from then, and then she lost the next one. So... By and large, her UFC career was finished. So I, I would think, don't knock the hand that feeds you, because, and I don't think, I don't think she's had a, gr- a great a hand. She's nowhere close to uh, to Rhea Ripley or Charlotte Flair. Nowhere close. She can do the UFC stuff. And she can be a good heel because people legitimately don't like her. I used to complain that when she would come out of the, on um, SmackDown or Raw, she would come out the gate and she was smiling and waving. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. Then you get in the ring and now you want people to hate you. Don't you think you would come out from the door in a badass mood? Say, what the hell is she mad about? And, you know, she was shaking kids' hands. Bad people don't do that. Well, I mean, they're was, heels. Was they're heels. Face. She was a baby face when she was doing the smiling, but they were reacting to her like she was a heel. Well, anyway. But but anyway, Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair, I would say that's the match of the weekend, which completely surprised me because, like I said, I didn't have high hopes for them either. And they proved me wrong. I did pick the winner. Hey, I only missed one out of the out of the whole WrestleMania. No, I, I, I missed the Roman Reigns because well, everything well everything that, that told told me that he was going over it was because of the way they were treating it. But they they, they performed and they accomplished what they set out to do. And I, believe me, fans that don't like it. That attention span is like to the next TV show. 
Really? Very rare I say this. Like I said, I thought the Rhea Ripley-Charlotte Flair match was superb. One of the best women's matches in WrestleMania history. I think the, the two others I would put in that conversation is with Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair last year with Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks from WrestleMania 37. I think those are the three greatest women's matches of all time. Rhea and Charlotte definitely showed out 